This is my final presentation. The overview. The audience will be sophomores in high school. The unit will be, um, students will be reading short stories and identifying or analyzing pieces of indirect characterization, so I call that steel, and they will then infer what those pieces tells the reader about the character. The learning goals. Analyze how complex characters develop over the course of a text using steel. Use textual evidence to back up inferences. Judge a character's personality via the steel method. Produce clear and coherent writing in which the development, organization, and style are appropriate to task, purpose, and audience. Present information, findings, and supporting evidence clearly, concisely, and logically such that listeners can follow. Make strategic use of digital media and presentations to enhance understanding. And organization, development, substance, and style of presentation are appropriate to purpose, audience, and task. Context within which this unit will be taught. This unit will be taught in a high school classroom where there is access to Chromebooks. So lesson one, the learning goal is judge a character's personality via the Steele method. The first lesson will be an introduction of indirect characterization using the Steele method. I would use an infographic like the one I have created to introduce Steele to the students. We would then watch video clips to practice the Steele method. At the end of class, students would be asked to complete an exit ticket about Steele using Google Forms. So the infographic replaces an entire lecture about indirect characterization and provides a visual for students to reference in later lessons. And the Google Forms exit ticket collects all of that data and shows me it all at once so I can immediately see where students are at with their understanding of the Steele method. So this is the infographic. I think it could be easily changed to be a certain character. So if we were doing Gatsby, we could do Gatsby, Nick, Daisy, anyone like that. It's pretty easy. It shows them directly where everything should be for steel. And then my exit ticket would kind of just look like this. It's really simple, just a couple questions. They'd scale it on one through three, one through five, and then they would have a video clip that they would watch and then type in their answer with. Lesson two. Learning goals for lesson two are analyzing how complex characters develop over the course of a text using steel, use textual evidence to back up inferences, and judge a character's personality via the steel method. So a description of the lesson. The second lesson will be students reading short stories and identifying the elements of steel for the main character. All of the stories would be on Google Drive for students to access. We would start by reading, analyzing, and annotating the contents of the dead man's pockets together using steel. After the first story, students will work in small groups and do the same thing with two other stories. Students will need to make copies of the stories and invite each group member to the story so they can all work on it together. They will read, analyze, and annotate the text and then share it with me when they are done. Students will then move on to individual work where they repeat the process with two more stories. This lesson would probably take a few days to do because there are a few stories that they have to read and the stories definitely differ in length depending on which ones they do. So Google Drive provides a place where documents can all be stored in one area without fear or worry of them getting lost. Google Drive also allows for students to collaborate with, e with each other on the same document. The process of students making their own copy, sharing it with their group mates to edit, and then sharing it with me is incredibly easy. I tried doing this with Evernote, but the stories had to be downloaded, annotated, and then uploaded again to the Evernote site, and that was just a lot, I felt like, for students to do. Google Drive makes this process a lot easier and it allows students to get instant feedback from me after I look at the stories they chose. It also gives them a safe place to keep these stories instead of sho shoving them in a backpack to never see again. Students will also be able to go back and look at the stories for references with easy access because they will be referencing the stories again for um, citing and quotes. So this is just kind of what the Google Drive would look like. It would have all the stories. They would just click on one and then make a copy and they can highlight it, annotate it, do whatever they need to do with their group mates. Lesson three. 
The learning goals of lesson three are analyzing how complex characters develop over the course of a text using steel, use textual evidence to back up inferences, and judge a character's personality via the steel method. Description of the lesson. The third lesson will be focusing on a specific character from a story using steel. As a class, we will go back through the contents of the Dead Man's Pocket story and pick a piece of text and pick pieces of text that show the elements of steel, preferably the strongest pieces of text. These pieces of text will be organized into a mind map on the bubble.us website. Students will help me explain what each piece of text tells us about the main character from the story. Students will then do the same with the character for one of the four stories they read. Students may use bubble.us, Kaku, or Creately. Students would then share their mind maps with me to receive feedback. These mind mapping tools give students a place to organize all of their thoughts and strongest pieces of evidence for their chosen character. It also gives them a great visual of how the steel method works. They will be able to go back to this tool and pull from it when writing their paragraphs. All of these mind mapping tools are available for Chrome since Chromebooks are the popular choice for classrooms. So this mind map I did using Poplet and that's only available for iOS, but it's really simple and easy. They would just click each box and then type directly into it. And there's a place for their example from the text and then what does that exactly tell them about the character. And then if we wanted to see it used with bubble.us, it's pretty much the same thing. You can zoom into it to see it a little bit better. So the character name would go there and then you would just click and you can instantly type. Really easy, great way for them to organize all of their thoughts when looking at those characters. Lesson four. Learning goals for lesson four are analyze how complex characters develop over the course of a text using steel, use textual evidence to back up inferences, judge a character's personality via the steel method, Produce clear and coherent writing in which the development, organization, and style are appropriate to task, purpose, and audience. Description. The fourth lesson will have students picking one word that describes their character and use the evidence from their mind map to help support that claim by producing a paragraph using at least two pieces of evidence. I will have an example paragraph to show and go over with students from the contents of the dead man's pockets. Students will write their paragraphs on Zoho, share their paragraph with two other students to edit, and then share their paragraph with me for feedback. Zoho allows for easy sharing and editing of written work so students can collaborate and make suggestions on each other's work. Students can easily access their written work without fear of it being lost or misplaced. It also shows it also allows me to give instant feedback. So Zoho is very much like Google Docs. It allows you to share, edit, highlight, annotate, pretty much the same thing. See if it'll pop up. There we go. So this is what it would kind of look like. You can easily share. You just click the button and then a little box would pop up for you to share it with other people. You can do it by email, all that kind of fun stuff. And then finally, lesson five, learning goals of lesson five, present information, findings, and supporting evidence clearly, concisely, and logically such that listeners can follow, make strategic use of digital media and presentations to enhance understanding, organization, development, substance, and style of presentation are appropriate to purpose, audience, and task. Description. The fifth lesson will have students taking their paragraphs and turning them into a presentation for the class. Students can present their paragraphs in any way they want as long as it is not the paragraph itself. Students would be required to use more than just the two pieces of evidence from their paragraph, so they would have to refer back to their mind maps. Students could use Canva or Info Infogram to make a poster, presentation, or infographic. They could use Weed Video to create a video for their presentation, and Powtoon or Animaker could be used to create an animation presentation. Students can use a different tool if they check with me first. The different tools allow for students to present their paragraphs to the class in a way that they feel is appropriate for the class and information they are presenting. Not every student is going to connect with an animation maker or an infographic. 
This gives them freedom of choice to create. They are using Web 2.0 tools to enhance the understanding of their paragraphs for others in a way that is organized and developed. Using the tools for presentations engages not only the student presenting, but the audience as well, because they are seeing the information being presented in a new and engaging way instead of just listening to a paragraph being read out loud. So I have a couple examples. So this could be a infographic, like a longer version of a poster. It's just kind of interactive. And then they can make a poster or something else using Canva like I did right here. They're really simple and easy to use. I think it'd be a great choice for a presentation. And then these are my images credits. All images found on Google Images using a labeled for reuse filter. And then none of the images have been modified besides for size.